Hello everyone, welcome back to more streams about the Try Hack Me advent of Cyber 2020. Took a couple days off because I thought about it and I didn't want to do a stream that was maybe just half an hour to an hour if I'm only doing one or two challenges. Um, obviously that's an estimate, you know, I might end up taking a lot longer in any of these challenges, but so far... Most of them about have been about half an hour, um, and I didn't necessarily have other stuff planned for the stream, so uh, I decided to take a couple days, work on some other stuff in the meantime, off stream, and then uh, now we have four new challenges that are available, so lots of options uh, for stuff to work on on this stream. Obviously, I'm going to try to just take them in order. Um, and the first two that we have are reverse engineering challenges, then a special room, the special room by Tiberius. Uh, no idea what's going to be on that one. And one that's in a category called blue teaming, which I guess is just generally uh, replicating a defensive cybersecurity scenario. Maybe somebody has hacked into something and you need to investigate. So maybe there is... You know, it's kind of an incident response situation, maybe. Um, that's that's my vague guess. I've never done blue teaming, and that hasn't really been the focus of my interest uh, in learning cybersecurity stuff. So we'll find out when we get there. Hopefully we can get through all of these on this stream. And depending on how I'm feeling after that, if it doesn't take too long, I've got some other stuff. Uh, that might be fun to work on on stream, working on some problems. Not exactly pwn stuff. I mean, technically it's in the category of pwn, but it's not the binary exploitation level of pwn stuff yet. Um, I'm working through a course that's basically about binary exploitation and, and pwn stuff in general, but they start off with um, a, before getting into like, doing buffer overflows, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they've got some set UID based pwn challenges, or it's, it's really one challenge, but you have to find a hundred uh, binaries that can be exploited to read a flag file if they've been done as set UID. So that's a very interesting challenge to me just because of the volume. I'm, you know, I'm gonna push past all the very obvious ones and need to really start considering um, stuff that I wouldn't have normally looked at if I'm looking for, I mean, granted, like, none of these programs would be set UID in any sort of normal setup, but um, definitely I'd be looking at programs that I wouldn't normally think uh, about as ways to read a file, basically. So I think that's an interesting challenge. I'm going to do as many of those as I possibly can. And then the course moves on to shell coding stuff. It sounds like there's a lot of shell coding practice, which um, I think is really interesting. So we'll get to that when we, if we're able to finish uh, the the available Try Hack Me Advent of Cyber challenges. So we have day 17 through 20. I believe we go up to day 25. So we're getting towards the end. Um, and I'll probably hold off to have another three or four challenges available for the next stream just to get through a bunch of them in a row but we've got a, a set of them uh, good enough now so um yeah we should uh just dive into it give me one second and i'm gonna um just mention this stream to some folks So, 
day 17 is reverse engineering, reverse elf nearing. Oh, I knew they were going to throw the elf reference in there at some point. This time I think it really is a reference to the elf uh, executable and linkable format, I think. Okay, the story. McSkitty has never really touched low-level languages. This is something they must learn in their quest to defeat the Christmas monster. I feel like... Okay. I don't remember us defeating it, that being a quest that we were on, but so be it. Um, and we have an introduction to x86-64 uh, assembly. They're going to use radar. I'll go... At, oh, i got to hit deploy. Otherwise, we'll be waiting. Um... Yeah, I'll use Radar. Why not? This is going to be a very small file. I'm pretty confident there. Um, and I use the grep format. Because so I think you can just tilde. You just do AFL tilde main, and that'll be the equivalent of grepping for main. Um, but yeah, so. We'll log into the machine, and oh, we're oh, okay. So it's gonna have radar on the target machine, I guess. And we'll just go ahead and use the one that they have installed. That's fine. And then they show, or maybe this is. Um, I mean, this stuff is just sort of a guide to how to use radar a little bit, and then they show you. Uh, you know, you can do a disassembly. You can figure out how to set, I forget how I would set Intel format in Radar because I don't want to look at the at t format of the disassembly. Um, okay, so as always, just going to kind of skip down to the end and see what the challenges are. Use your newfound knowledge of Radar to analyze the challenge one file in the instance that is attached to this task to answer the questions below. So, okay. Let's go ahead and uh, set that as the box. And what is the login info they gave? Elf McEager and Advent of Cyber. Oh, um, can I do? Or, uh, do I specify that password on the command line? Maybe you can't do that anymore. I thought that was an option. Um, whatever. Oh, and it's login name. What is, I don't know where I'm getting the U and the P from, some other command. All right, so we're in there. You can see challenge file. It's a 64-bit elf, statically linked. And yeah, let's uh, open her up. Go ahead and analyze it. Probably better to just do AA with it being statically linked and this not being a super powerful machine, but it still didn't take very long. Okay, what is the local value, or what is the value of local C uh, when its corresponding move L instruction is called? All right. Um, so do S main. No, I went uh, BB. Okay. Oh yeah, see it defaulted to Intel. I don't know why they were getting. Maybe they configured theirs for eight, uh, for AT and T. Um, when they say when, do they mean after the move instruction has sort of uh, executed? And yeah, so. I'm gonna go with uh, just one. Okay. 
What is the value of EAX when the IMO instruction is called? So again, I assume they mean after it is completed. Uh, so we're moving one into EAX and then, yeah, so EAX is gonna be six after that because we're multiplying the six from local eight that was moved in here. Moved in, and then we're multiplying that by what's in EAX and EAX has the value out of local C, so that's a one. So I'm all of one by six, and I believe it stores the result in EAX first, and then ECX, I don't remember what the um, overflow register is, but the EAX is gonna be the receiver. Um, okay, and then what is the value of local four before EAX is set to zero? So we set EAX to zero, that's the return code to say exit status is zero. Otherwise, we move it into, we also move it into local four. That's also just going to be six. This is like, I don't know. Um, that wasn't anything. Okay. I mean, granted, like, obviously it's intended for folks who've never seen assembly code, but still didn't feel like it was pushing very hard on, on your understanding of assembly. Um, all right. So day 18. Yeah, we're, we're, if the rest of them go this quickly. <laughs> um, okay, so the bits of Christmas is day 18. The story is, Silly Santa, forgetting his password yet again, complains Elf McEager. However, it is in fact Elf McEager who is silly for not creating a way to reset Santa's password for the TBFC dashboard. That's fair. Don't blame the user. The system should support the fact that uh, people are forgetful. Santa needs to get back into the dashboard for Christmas. Can you help Elf McEager reverse engineer TBFC's application to retrieve the password for Santa? So there's a password in here somewhere. Um, and it's a .NET binary. So that'll be interesting. Um, let's look at the challenge. I gotta terminate the old one and deploy the new one. Okay. Challenge is deploy the instance attached to this task and log in using the RDP protocol. Open the application tbfc dot underscore app dot exe on the desktop and enter the correct password. You can use Ramina on the try hack me attack box to connect to the instance with the following credentials. Okay. Uh, oh, this box is also by CMNatic, so thank you CMNatic for this and, and I think all of the, uh, and was this one as well, I didn't say necessarily who, this one, um, sorry, I'm getting a little distracted with that, um, yeah, maybe it was by Darkstar, because they did the video for it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I suppose we will have to do that. I mean, the, the, uh, what we'll call it? The binary we need to analyze is sitting on a Windows box, so we're gonna have to RDP into it. Mina, I believe I have that installed. I feel like I typed that wrong. I guess not. Okay. So let's go ahead and pop into there. And CMNatic and Advent of Cyber. I thought this, because I remember seeing something where somebody said this was a um, .NET reversing challenge, and I was a little like, oh, I'm going to have to go download some .NET disassembly, IL spy, um, I think is probably the one to use these days, um, as they suggest. Um, 
but I didn't want to have to figure out if I could get that running on Linux or what. Uh, so I'm glad that it's just in the box. Okay, so you can run it. And what's the password? Cool. Um, and so we'll open up IL Spy. We'll open the app in there. There we go. First part uh, solved, and let's look for that password. Oh, they put it in a K okay. main form. Um, let's see. So my path through this is going to be like there's a submit button. And maybe it's called button activate. And when that's clicked, it's going to check something about the password. Um, hmm. Is it uh, S A N T A password three two one yeah okay so Santa password three two one cool and let's go ahead and throw that in the flag is T H M zero four six A F. I guess it's kind of hard to read at that. I, I don't know if I can zoom in easily. So let's just try THM046AF. All right, there we go. That one was way simpler than I was anticipating, to be honest. Um, so we are we are running through these. Uh, Disconnect, I guess. I, I mean, it'll shut down the system, I guess, on its own, but or when I click terminate. Uh, okay. Special Room by Tiberius, Day 19, The Naughty or Nice List. Oh, hey, Ferna Carl. Uh, well, I'll be getting to some poems, you know, in a few days, I think. Um, after I go through these, I'm going to go and work on some stuff from Pwn College. But I'm going to be doing those in order as well. And they start off with, like, uh, as I was saying at the very beginning of the stream, like, set your ID based challenge. So there's only one of those. The course seems to move very quickly, but I do want to kind of try to follow it in order um, since it was, you know, it's been structured and put together as a university course. Um, I think there's probably little bits of stuff that I have missed in my self-education because it's been a little scattered. And I, you know, I think if I want to, if I'm going to take a well-prepared course, I want to go through all of it. So I, find all the little bits that I personally missed. Um, and I mean, the set UID stuff isn't necessarily super new, but it does sound interesting uh, the way that they've gone about it. So I'm going to do that and then there's shell coding and then they finally get into like buffer overflow stuff. Um, so if you're looking for me to get into like heap exploit stuff, we're probably, I don't know, at least a week from that <laughs> um and then once i get back into there when i'm in the like range where it's stuff that's completely new to me i think my mode will be do the stuff in the university course uh you know watch the lectures and do the practice that they have and then work on the additional practice that's from the nightmare course um as well as uh the person that does that university course czar does who um also is part of the team that runs uh, the DEFCON CTF 
for the past couple of years. Like obviously, you know, very competent and experienced in CTF challenges and pwn challenges in particular. Um, he's also got a list of uh, uh, war game nexus. There we go. Zardas. War game nexus. I'll throw this in, in chat if you want to check it out. Um, which is just, you know, links to tons and tons of different, like, there's many that I've seen before, but others that I have missed. Um, so we've got a, an easy place to go to if we ever run out of stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, we can go over to Rop Emporium, obviously. Pwn College is the one that is connected to the course. So again, I'll be trying to go through all of that stuff, but then play other things that are in the same category of exploit uh, to add additional practice on. But I don't think we'll be getting to stuff that's not been on stream before in terms of like uh, heap based exploits, um, probably for at least a week. And that's assuming I'm, I'm really keeping up pace of like working on this stuff every day. Uh, so that's my expectation for the timeline, I guess. But yeah, um, if you want to practice stuff, I would highly recommend checking out this repo just because it's got so many resources uh, and jumping off points. Okay. So the naughty or nice list, day 19. Santa has released a web app that lets the children of the world check whether they are currently on the naughty or nice list. Unfortunately, the elf who coded it exposed more things than she thought. Can you access the list administration and ensure that every child gets a present from Santa this year? Feel free to try hacking this web app on your own or follow the instructions below. Note, when bypassing the hostname filter, use localtest.me, otherwise your attempts won't work. When bypassing the hostname filter... Okay. Um, sounds like it's uh, server-side request forgery. So, as always, uh, did I? Oh, I didn't hit deploy. I'm gonna have to wait. Um, I'm gonna just go for it first, and then we'll see. Um, I don't know that I've done a lot of server-side request forgery. But I feel like I've done it at least a couple of times, not necessarily on Try Hack Me. I think it comes up in the Hacker One uh, 101 course, basically. So we'll see uh, how well I can do without going back and reading through their instructions. And. What is Santa's password and then the challenge flag. So pretty straightforward on the questions. Just go in and do it and then uh, that'll be it. All right, so the first two were super fast. This one I anticipate taking a little longer. We'll find out. All right, we are almost to the point where I can see the IP address. The box may not be available at that point still. Let's let's give it a shot. No. Um, oh, that's fun. It left my uh, forget what the thing is to reset all the just reset. Okay, uh, so that'll be our room. And yeah, we'll just have to wait until it's actually been fully deployed and the service is up. Um, Please consider giving Tiberius a follow on Twitter. I don't think this is going to work. I think uh, my Twitter is back to being off. So maybe I can follow them on 
my phone or something. Uh, give them a follow on Twitch. There you go. They have uh, videos? No. Okay. Maybe they'll pop up at some point. And YouTube? Give them a subscribe on YouTube as well. Why not? All right. Let's see how that service is doing. Still nothing. Okay. And they also sell two OSCP Provest courses on Udemy um, with coupons on their Twitter. That's kind of how Udemy works is they, they have their like actual list price. And then generally speaking, they give, they have a mechanism by which the instructor provides coupons for a significant discount. I remember watching a video mainly, the video was mostly about the fact that somebody was creating a Udemy course by stealing the content from this guy who had created it and given it away for free on YouTube. Um, and they're concerned that, you know, that seemed to be kind of endemic to the platform that Udemy doesn't really, um, put any effort into, uh, sort of reviewing the content on their platform to see if it's, you know, actually legit content that's been created by the, the person who is putting it on the system or whether or not they have, you know, basically uh, the the correct rights to do that. And, but they also, as a side thing, kind of went into the whole funding model and, the you know, the, the fact that I guess Udemy works by having the people that provide the content do almost all of the marketing for their, uh, for their own courses through this sort of coupon referral system. I don't remember the exact details, but that's why every single time there's a Udemy course, you see the person who's made the course have a coupon available to make it, you know, the kind of price that is the generally expected price, like a $20 or something rather than whatever the list price of 60 or a hundred dollars or whatever, uh, ends up being. Um, and that to me is, you know, it's, at least, I granted, I was watching a video that was explicitly kind of negative about Udemy, but yeah, I don't know what their what service they're providing other than sort of the hosting of videos and a payment platform. If you have to do all of the marketing for your own content, um, and if people find your content through. Udemy already. So I think the, the other aspect was like, you get a lot, you, you get a decent portion of the revenue that your course generates only when that revenue is from people who are new to Udemy. So if somebody finds your course because they are, they've taken a different course and they're browsing around and they see, Oh, this is a related course or something. And they take it, especially if they use the coupon, maybe, um, or maybe the coupon is how they track that it came from outside. But, um, my recollection is that, uh, if they aren't sourcing the person directly to you as the marketing, you know, referral source, basically, then you get a much smaller percentage of whatever the revenue is from their sale of the course that you created. Like it just, it, it feels like a system that is set up with all of these exploitative. Is that the right IP? That's not the right IP. No wonder. Why did I? Hmm. I did it not set. Should reset target. Um, oh, 
I was doing THM room. No wonder. Um, should have been doing box. Okay. Yeah. It seems like a rather exploitative. I mean, granted, you know, it's a business. That's how businesses work. They're going to be exploitative by nature, but it, it feels like it goes into the, you know, leaning on that as much as possible kind of arena and I don't know that's I'm not thrilled about that but it is it's definitely one of the preferred platforms okay so we've got this site I want to know what the, the network traffic is when I visit what give me all of the requests oh I have it filtered images, of course. Okay. Um, and let's filter it to 10.10. .10. Sure, that's good enough, I think. So, we just have a bunch of assets, JavaScript, and image file style sheets. Nothing. Terribly interesting, although this one I'm curious about. What is this request? Is that because I hit the rec the reload button or something? Let's clear this out. Just do from scratch. No, it does do an XHR based request to slash. All right, why is what is this request about? from jQuery. Can you show me in the debugger? No? All right, I'm confused about this listing, um, but so be it. It's in custom JS. Why does it think that there's no sources, even though there's tons of script tags? Um, does Leo stop? All right. Open file and debugger. Did that, oh, did all of these fail? I don't think so. Yeah, didn't fail. So I don't know why these are grayed out. And why I can't just say open debugger. Um, so, where's that slash? It said the stack trace was line 124. There's jQuery and then it's on line 56. Hmm. Okay, definitely confusing to me. Why? Oops, why can I think? Selected everything and then it won't unselect. Yeah, it doesn't. And it said there was data with it, which is, but it's not anything listed in the request. So I don't know. Okay, I don't think that's relevant. Um, let's do a request for test. So 
Okay. Here we can see what is more plausible. Yeah, I, I, I mean, this is sort of an aspect that I'm not necessarily that familiar with um, in Firefox, but I don't know what the the colon syntax is in this stack trace. Okay, so there's a checklist function. Probably don't need to worry about source, the, the actual JavaScript that's doing the requests. We can see that we are calling proxy with this URL in it. Um, so what is the response from that? Test is on the naughty list. So this actually does the, oh, okay. It probably search.php probably returns just this text and then that gets inserted by whatever uh, code we're hitting at the root path. So, okay. So let's go ahead and like edit this and say, you know, foo.php, right? It's gonna say it can't find it, I'm assuming. Yeah, so we get a 404 that has been inserted into here. So that's great. Okay, um, can we get a directory listing? Okay, so what do we want to do? Because that's the question, right? How do, now that we know we can proxy this to somewhere, what is, I guess let's try and log in. Is that also proxy? Oh, I need to do it here. <laughs> that just goes to admin.php, but maybe that admin.php is here. Um, so we go search .php. No, okay. Um, but we can give it a shot. We can see. And what do we get back? We got back a, two, a 302 on that. Um, so and we go to admin. That just, okay, that's just a href or whatever. Um, fragment. So let's edit and resend and say admin.php to see what that looks like. No. All right. Um, Search has been blocked by our security team. Okay, so there are, there's a filter of some kind on the domain. Let's think. Does this come back with a hmm. 
nothing that's going to indicate to us what this machine's name is within that local network. And we can try giving it this, right? Um, but I doubt that'll get through. Yeah. Okay. So it's not any way to do one of these. Get the source code? No. Okay. HP three is that working? Okay. So how can I make use of this? to do to escape that <laughs> wow it's been so long since I've done any of this percent or plus I don't have plus in here all right percent to be See, why, okay, whatever, do plus percent, or to be there, okay, and then don't, oh man, all right, let's see what that ends up looking like, no, okay, so I don't think I have Or We did get something there, but uh, that's probably just malformed. <sighs> Let me just do that. See what that comes back with. Okay. Yeah, okay. So probably we aren't, I mean, it's, it's not supposed to be a SQL injection based attack is my understanding, so. I guess it would need to be, eh, whatever. I, I think the fact that the quotes didn't do anything is enough of a signal. Um, okay. So what is the, I mean, we need to get into the admin system, right? What is our goal? Can you access the list administration 
and ensure that every child, okay. So we want to get past the admin page. Um, I mean, I'm going to just go ahead and, and use this. Oh, uh, I see. So I think that what they're saying is, right, if we go to, and, oh no, um, the proxy to admin, or uh, 127, right, that's going to be, Blocked. We go to localhost. No, I didn't think about doing it this way earlier, though. Um, no. So then, if we use local test.me, that maybe is not blocked by their service. By their. No, it is blocked. Um, okay. Let we just go to slash. What does that look like? It's also blocked. Okay, so my theory is, is just not correct. Maybe it needs to be, maybe it needs to have the text list dot... Um, is it blocked? Okay. We say list.ho ho ho and not port 8080, that's gonna fail or it's going to be blocked. There we go. Okay, so it needs to say list.ho ho somewhere within the host name. Um local test.me. Okay, so the way that that's working is however they've set up the DNS in, I guess, uh, on the the system that we're connecting to right now, the 1010.147.107 sort of outer proxy, um, the publicly facing web server is, they have local test.me local test.me, I guess I should say, and it will accept any subdomains, and those still presumably go to 127, uh, they go to localhost. Is local test.me just a thing? I guess so. Oh, it's not even from their machine, it's just a interesting. <laughs> um, well, this is certainly handy for SSRF, I guess. I don't, I imagine it was not created for that purpose, but um, yeah, so somebody has just set up a domain and they have a DNS, uh, you know, bind server or something set up that any subdomain on that um, returns 127.001 and maybe works on IPv6 as well. I don't know. Uh, who is this guy for site? Okay. Set up by Microsoft. Thank you, Microsoft. Okay, so this was enough to get the 
password uh, but just because it's like listed there on the page if you are attempting to access this page from localhost it's my guess um, like I think if we we can double check that it's the same server by you know opening slider dash index.js just something very small um, see if that gets us anything no that was not found interesting oh it's under slash js it's just not showing me the whole path i'd rather have the full path okay um Still not found. So maybe it's not hitting the same, or maybe it's configured at like the Apache level that if you are arriving at this site from localhost, then we're routing you to a completely different web app. So that's interesting. So if we go to like slash admin.php, like this also won't be found because it's not the same web app as the, yeah. Okay. So if we throw in that password, then we get in. No, is it capital Santa? It is, okay. So that was the password. And then we can hit delete naughty link or naughty list rather. Um, what do I have down here? The error page? Okay. The console, rather. The font is uh, not acceptable to them for some reason. Interesting. Um, too large subtable. Hmm. I don't know anything about fonts, so I don't know why that is a problem. But that's, that's interesting error to get. No, I don't care about that okay and nothing interesting in the response other than you know we've got a button that we can press okay it'll just alert it doesn't actually need to be clicked doesn't submit anything to the server can you just let me copy okay so um Obviously, I needed that hint from the beginning, and I should have I, I should have on my own come without the sort of from the hint come to the conclusion of trying localhost or one two seven zero zero one um, rather than the public URL because obviously if we're on the internal network, um, this you know granted this is a non routable IP but in theory, in a real world scenario, this would be a, an actually routable IP on available through the public internet. The machine's IP address on the LAN would be a different IP address. We wouldn't know it. But if we want to talk to the same internal machine, uh, we could go ahead and give a local host. And so I really should have thought to try that before seeing that hint and realizing like, oh, maybe what they're asking us to do is connect to local host because it's local test.me. And then I didn't know at all about the actual domain local test on me and um, the value that that has, both for um, some particular setups for software development, web development stuff, uh, and and you know testing things out, as well as uh, for in this case SSRF. Okay, cool. And we can move on to day 20. So we've got about we're in an hour in. Maybe we can do this one in half an hour, and then we've definitely got time to work on some of the Pwn College stuff. Okay. Day 20, PowerShell Elf. Uh, 
that they're getting more more of a stretch. Uh, power shelf to the rescue. Someone is mischievous at the best festival company. The contents within the stockings have been removed. A clue was left in one of the stockings that hints that the contents have been hidden within Elf Station 1. Make eager moves. Uh, turn the old one, sorry. And then we'll deploy that. Make eager moves quickly and attempts to RDP into the machine. Yikes, he is unable to log in. Luckily, he has been learning PowerShell and he can remote into the workstation using PowerShell over SSH. Task, use the PowerShell console to navigate throughout the endpoint to find the hidden contents to reveal what was hidden in the stockings. Okay, so this is like basically going to be a PowerShell you know, basics, uh, challenge. So I do, um, appreciate PowerShell over SSH. That's how I try to set up when on the occasions when I'm running a windows server and a VM or an actual remote server somewhere. Um, I prefer to not have to RDP in because mostly what I want to do on those servers anyways is use the shell so I can just SSH in and use PowerShell through that. Um, and certainly if you're running one of those headless variants of Windows Server, that's what you're gonna be doing. I guess you could use Windows Batch, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so we'll SSH with McEager as the username, and then the password is gonna be Rockstar uh, exclamation point. Oh, yeah, let's copy this first. THM box. Then we'll copy the password in. Okay, probably still loading up. Um, what are the tasks that we need to do? Search for the first hidden elf file within the documents folder. Okay. Um, so this will be fun because I often will use PowerShell for a little bit and then forget uh, how to do stuff with it. So I'm going to be looking stuff up a little bit. Um, but we got to wait for the machine to be available first. All right. So... We can just do GCI, there's a hidden flag, I guess. It's helpful. And then ignore errors rather than spam the console with them. Um, I guess this is the equivalent of type or cat. While we're waiting, let's guess what this could be. Um, a something truck. I was going to say fire truck, but the fire's not going to fit there. Um, a brown truck. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, now we're getting refused, so that's a, that's a change. Maybe it's still starting up, but the SSH service has not actually started yet. Ba -ba -ba. What is the name of the movie that Elf 2 wants? Um, Spider-Man. No, I didn't think that's probably too long. Mm. So we got an eight-letter movie title. One one word could have hyphens. Um. I'm 
Avengers. Is that going to be too long? Okay. I feel like we're back to getting somewhere. another it's a good what kind of movie would an elf want to watch I think it would like a story in which an elf from the North Pole gets zapped into a fantasy land and there's elves from like Lord of the Rings. And then you have this weird elf dichotomy situation. But, uh, do, do, do. Uh, okay, while we're waiting, just the ridiculousness of this <laughs> image is, is working for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, now I'm feeling like what what's going on with this machine, to be honest. Um... Okay. You tell me, so it says it's up. So why am I getting nothing? Okay, maybe I just wasn't waiting long enough before killing it. Oh, I copied the the URL <laughs> for that image, I think. Or did I? Maybe not. Let's go ahead and copy this again. Nope, seemed to work. Now we're in command, so let's uh, PowerShell ourselves. Let's empower our shell. Machine is kind of slow. Let's go to the documents directory. I typed it in. We'll see if it ever shows up. Um, Okay, there we go. It's a very slow machine. Or, or my connection is very slow. Either one. So is this going to be one of those like, hey, we've created a thousand directories. Um, oh no, I want to do GCI. Um, let's just accept the errors. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, okay. So Dur listed it just fine. <laughs> uh, oh, no, no, no. My bad. These are different files. This is a one. Okay. Oh, and the other edited a different thing. I need to be more observant. E1F1.txt. Uh, 
that a second. Two front teeth. All right, well, you know, fair enough. Good reference. I was fairly off. Um, on we do folder like that. It's fairly off thinking like a brown truck. to get help GCI. Should tell us the options. I don't know why I'm doing it. Dash directory, okay. Mm. Um, where's the recursive option? Just recurse. Okay, did they say it was in a oh, search on the desktop? Okay. What was that error message? Uh, output error action. Okay. Enter. Oh, because I don't have numlock on, so maybe that enter is weird. All right. Let's see if this one shows up non hidden. All right. There, there we go. Scrooged, okay, okay. Nope, not scrogged. <laughs> and now we need to go into Probably not Elam backup or installer. Probably shouldn't have done recurse on this, but so be it. Maybe we should, because neither of those. 
So let's see. Um, so it's 11, 18, 11, 23, 11, 17. Arguably, we could be looking for only files after um, 11, 17, midnight or something. Um, I don't know. Search the Windows directory for a hidden folder that contains files for ELF3. This command will take a while. Okay, fair enough. And how many words does the first file contain? Oh, we have to like, all right. I, I'm struggling to think of a case where I need to count words, but I guess, you know, we have the word count program on Linux. I only use it to count letter or uh, lines, sometimes characters for whatever reason, um, rather than just look at the size ls or something. Maybe oh, probably because it's I use it sometimes when I'm like streaming a result, piping a result rather into it, and then I want to see how long that is without storing it to a file and looking at it with ls. <laughs> Uh, ba, ba, ba. But, you know, who knows how many of these directories there's going to be. There we go. Can I control C this? Yes. Let's see what we got in here. All right. Oh, it's just that, just the name of the. Okay. How many words does the first file contain? Okay. Um, can you do CD dash? Oh, well, that would be just back to Windows, anyways. Caesar slash McGeeger. Documents. What? Um, measure object uh, dash word. Eight words? No, that seems wrong. Okay, so it must be the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're just hidden files in that directory. Let's see if we can CD dash. Nope. Okay, there we go. So, all right. Two words are at index five five one and six nine nine one. Okay, so we can basically get the contents as an array. So we want to do this. Maybe, well, that's measure object. Um, so I think they mean string index 551 is the beginning of the word. Just 
Shouldn't this give me a single letter? It do that's so weird. All right, I don't, I don't know what the value of that is to have that be the default. But if we get the contents of a file, the return type is an array of the words of the file. Oh, maybe it's just lines and the whole thing is lines. It doesn't tell us how many lines there are in that file though. Oh, because we didn't ask for her. Let me just do measure object and it'll give us all four. Count um, line. Okay, okay, that makes a lot more sense. So if you do get content, you get an array of the lines of the file. That's a little more sane than an array of the words. I was like, struggling to understand what red compressed okay no six nine nine one okay that I mean, red compressed doesn't make a lot of sense but it's maybe like red rider okay uh Okay, so yeah, we can do select string. Which is a similar thing to grep. Pattern, red rider, path to dot txt. Could have done simple match, I guess, but see, this should probably print out the entire line. No. We want to do case insensitive. <coughs> Sorry about that. Hmm. A little surprised. That we don't get anything. Search in the second file for the phrase from the previous question to get the full answer. Seems like it's case insensitive by default. We have to type that in. But let's give it a shot. Um, I could do simple match, but I would think that like this would also match as a regular expression that exact, we're not using any regular expression, uh, element. So, okay. 
So what's the first line in this? So it's like horrendously slow. It's not helping my disposition at the moment. <laughs> um, What is going on? Why is this command unable to All right, let's let's just see what's in this. Gotta just download this file and grep it locally. Because this is um, not, not an enjoyable experience. Uh, well, I did do, okay, so it's 12 megabytes roughly like how terrible are these commands implemented that you can't count 12 megabytes worth of text to see how many lines there are in you know half a minute who knows how long we'll be waiting here just to see just like I appreciate the design concepts in PowerShell, but there have been numerous cases in my experience where the performance that results from how you use commands and, and you know, pipe them together and stuff is just ridiculously bad. Like, I mean, for me, the number one that always sticks out is if you want to download a file, you have to turn off a thing where it displays a banner update into the terminal because it will try to re-display that to the terminal for every single byte that it downloads. So if you're downloading a 100 megabyte file, it will literally take 50 times as long um, because it's wasting all of its time trying to write a new message to the terminal saying, hey, we've downloaded, you know, 537 kilobytes, 192 bytes total. And then it says 539, 193 bytes and blah, blah. Like it's just an unfathomable decision to me. <laughs> and it, it remains unfixed because there's a workaround to say, just turn off that behavior. But the fact that it's there as a default is, I don't under, like people just simply at Microsoft simply must not use PowerShell to download files, which is absurd because you see that that is one of the things that's recommended in various cases. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, right, if we do grep, oops, type of that. Why is, so yeah, don't, Okay, see, this is one of those banner things that I'm talking about. And I realize this machine is probably slower than it would need to be on account of A, I'm connected, you know, through this connection. Like, it might be a slow connection from where I'm at to the machine. And it's going to be some incredibly underpowered machine because it's just a free thing uh, hosted on AWS or whatever. I'm sure they picked the most... The cheapest option which is completely understandable i'm not paying them for this so 
but it is like yeah this should come back and say select string stuff i'm pretty sure because i think that's just aliased um and i don't know why select string isn't finding that pattern i mean this is quite literally what they're saying to do i i guess we could put in oh no wait a second Uh, maybe path needs to be mm, maybe you can't provide a specific file by passing in path even though with like GC you can pass it in dash path and pass in a particular file let's give that a shot I guess give me that Strings or files to match against. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it implies... Are we actually now... Has this box actually been removed? Can't deploy it right now. I think that's purely an issue with the website uh, being tripped up by the earlier boxes that I've terminated. Yeah, let's add an hour. If it really takes an additional hour, then I'll be to grep this one file with PowerShell. I'll be um, unhappy. <laughs> I'm already kind of pissed off <laughs> at how this is going. Let me start again. Not right. Oh, it's capitalists. Do do do. Use the PowerShell. Um, select string, nope, not two E's. Let's just grab both of them, it doesn't really matter. And pattern, red rider. Doesn't find it. Okay. It must be misunderstanding. Let's do gc2.txt select string pattern red rider. So now we will pipe in the contents. This is probably going to take forever because it seemed like anything using get content of that file took forever has to read it in and put it into an array of strings and I mean it's only 12 megabytes but which uh, I mean I think on a normal powered computer would be nearly instantaneous but it's hard to say 
what the overhead is from PowerShell commands and the fact that this machine is, I don't know, one one hundredth of a CPU, <laughs> whatever the hell they get from uh, from AWS. Um, yeah, I mean, in theory, this should work. But we're just going to be sitting here forever while it does. So, I don't know what else to, to do in the meantime. Um... Can track usage. I think they can track at least the first time that a given subdomain gets used because the caching system, whatever caching layers in the DNS system, won't have that. So then they'll go to this guy's real DNS server. Um, I mean, I would think I don't. I would think you have to you you have to run, or otherwise have configured, a DNS server somewhere. That is going to respond with this on all subdomains. Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, Yeah, I don't, uh... The fact that select string is returning very quickly and not finding anything implies to me that it's not actually searching those files for some reason. Um... And I just don't know what I'm doing in my usage of it that's failing to be honest but i think this alternative approach with get content i feel like it's gonna work but you know we'll find out i just have nothing to do while we sit here and watch them this machine struggle to do one of the most basic tasks that a computer could possibly do. Probably a very uh, exciting stream for all of y'all. Is anybody who's actually watching? Looks like there might be. So, thank you and apologies <laughs> to those of you watching the stream right now. <laughs> um, all right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to just watch John Hammond's solution for this part. Oh, what? Okay, well, Jesus Christ. I mean, it sounded like he might have been having trouble too at that moment, but 
the key thing that I picked up on looking at this is uh, he's using it without the space. Um, they say use spaces when submitting the answer, which I guess I should have intuited implies that there are not spaces in the text of the file. Still nothing. <laughs> Perfect. Um, it is. Okay. There we go. I don't know why the asterisk didn't work there. That was not fun. But that is the end of that challenge and the end of all of the challenges that I have available to me at the moment. We'll be doing some more of them uh, in a couple days when when it, day 21, 22, maybe 23 are available again. 